Yeah. All right, assalamu alaikum and very good afternoon. Am I audible? Can you hear me? Yes, sir. All right, all right. Thank you. All right, let's begin. Uh, let me summarize we, what we have learned in our last three sessions. Huh? Uh, in our first session, we look into uh, the fundamentals of entrepreneurship. We look at the skills expertise needed uh, to launch uh, a new venture. I look at some of the characteristics of uh, an entrepreneur and entrepreneurship. Uh, we look at various life uh, cycle stages of uh, an entrepreneurship venture. And then the most importantly, we look at different kind of sources of financing available at different stages of life cycle of an entrepreneurship ventures. Okay. Uh, in the second week or uh, session two, basically we look into uh, generating ideas. How can we generate and screen ideas and make it commercial, something feasible, something uh, profitable, right? Uh, so we look into how can we convert, screen and convert an idea into a business concept and then we launch uh, entrepreneurial uh, ventures. Okay, that was uh, the session two. And then in session three, uh, we look into different forms of organization. Uh, we try to understand uh, different kind of forms, uh, different forms of organizations and see uh, once we have an idea, uh, which kind of organization is suit uh, for us to launch our idea, right? Idea to convert into business ventures. Uh, so there are many factors that actually uh, influence us, right, uh, to decide what kind of forms of organization we will use, right? You look into uh, uh, partnership, right, sole proprietorship, partnership, and corporations, right? And also under the partnership, we have also the two kinds, and under corporation, there are three kinds that we look at. So the third session, basically, we uh, understood how a new venture, a business, entrepreneurial activities or initiatives can be organized. And also towards the end of session three, we look at uh, some of the aspects of financing also, how can you organize financing? It was basically a revision of uh, session one, which we have done extensively looked at <coughs> different kind of sources of finances available at different life cycle stages of an entrepreneurship ventures, okay? Now, uh, so uh, we, we have already looked into, uh, we have already looked into uh, the fundamentals of an entrepreneurial venture. We have understood how uh, an ordinary idea can be converted into a commercial, uh, feasible, uh, profitable business concept. And then we also understood how can you organize uh, your uh, ideas, uh, make it an organization, right? Uh, because you have an idea, you've got finances, now you've got to launch. So in order to launch the organization, you have to have organizing capacity by uh, assembling a good team uh, to run the organization. So this week we are looking at uh, Operating and financial performance. We are going to look at how can you evaluate or measure operating and financial performances of an entrepreneurial venture. Okay. So now we are assuming that we have got a very good business idea. We screen them and we manage to convert the idea into a commercial one. So our business idea is now accepted as something viable, something feasible, something profitable, right? So we want to commercialize it. So once you run it, you start to launch the organization. Then we know at the first week, we understood that 30% entrepreneurial ventures usually get closed down within first two years. And 70% will usually close down within first five years. So altogether, only 30% 
entrepreneurial ventures will sustain more than five years. Okay. So once you run one year, then we have uh, only competition is with the industry. So if you start uh, a small venture and you have completed one year, so where can you compare? You look at industrial data, which is available. So you, you have certain measures, you have balance sheet, profit and loss account and cash flow statement. From those three statements, we have all the relevant data there and we use it to compare. So we compare with our venture against the industry. Or possibly, if we have data from similar company that we have launched, so we can compare our performance with similar uh, entrepreneurial ventures that is being existing already. So, okay, so to see whether uh, we are doing at par with industry, we are doing below, you know, we are performing below than the average performance of similar companies, or we are doing much better than others, okay? So first, one, one, once the one year is completed, then we will compare our performance against the industry, similar industry, or against another organization running similar kind of business that we run, okay? But as soon as we complete two years, then we can start comparing year to year in our own organization. Say, for example, you have launched a business venture in 2019, and then after 2019, at the end of 2019, you have your data available. And then once you complete 2020, then you have two years data. So those can be compared. Okay, that can be compared. Or even if you have three years performance, then you have three years data available. You can compare to see, you can put it in the graph and see, you can plot it and see whether this is moving upward trend or it is downward trend, or you're just stable. Huh? Or, when you compare the industry, you see whether you're performing below the industry or you're performing better than other companies, similar companies that are operating in the industry. Okay. Now, when you have learned accounting, you are taught the ratio analysis, right? We have liquidity ratios, efficiency ratios. We have uh, profitability ratios, all those ratios being taught. Uh, of course, we'll use those ratios for the comparative or comparison purposes, okay? To evaluate operating financial performance, we lose those ratios in order to compare, okay? In order to measure the performance of our organization. And then uh, when you are taught finance, additionally, you have learned the vertical and horizontal analysis, which two are also very good way of doing it because you can just put it in the graph or plot and you can easily see and compare year to year or uh, uh, you're comparing with your company with another company. So today's class, I'm going to use the ratio analysis as well, huh? even though you have learned it before. So we'll be doing a quick revision on it. And then additionally, for entrepreneurial ventures, we have some additional comparative comparison measures, okay? Um, to measure or evaluate the performance of an organization. That is basically, we call it cash burns or cash earns. Huh? So we'll be looking at those to see whether the company is performing better, all right? So we are going to use all those uh, uh, different way of comparing performances. So measuring and evaluating, right? You're measuring and comparing, or evaluating and comparing the performance of an entrepreneurial ventures. So this week is, uh, this session is very important because you'll be given uh, assignment number two based on this topic, okay? So assignment number one, uh, which uh, will be in the e-learning portal, uh, will be submitted, uh, this is week four. So you'll be submitting in week six. And this assignment, I'll also post it tomorrow in the e-portal, e-learning portal. This one has to be submitted in week seven, okay? Because you have to do three assignments, then you have a good project. So you, you have to start doing it already since it's already week four, okay? So today's class is very important in that sense that you will be required to do an assignment on this topic. So you got to be very careful and understand uh, the topic. Okay, finally, before I start the session, I am not going to do any calculation. I'm going to show you how ratios are calculated since you have learned it before, okay? And then once I give you the assignment, then you will have an opportunity to learn 
how practically we calculate it. And again, if you face any difficulty, you can always come back to me and then I will help you in case there are difficulties in calculating certain measures to compare organizations between organizations or year to year performance of a company, okay? All right, so uh, these are the learning objectives for today. Uh, okay, let me make it clear. Do I put this? Make it like, okay, better now. So we'll understand the importance of operating and financial performance measures and their users by, by life cycle stages. Uh, we look at different kind of ratios that can be used to monitor the eventual performance. We will identify specific cash burn rates measures and liquidity ratios. And then we will learn how to calculate and how do we explain and how an entrepreneur can use these findings by these calculations, okay? Then we'll be also looking at uh, debt ratios, what is known as also le leverage ratios. And we'll look at how a credit or lender can explain this or use this data available for them. Followed by, we're we'll looking at the profitability ratios. And then we look at how can you compare with the industry, okay? And at the end, as we know that every methods that we use have certain limitations. So we'll be looking at some of the limitations of uh, ratio analysis that we use, okay? So these are the measure, financial measures by life cycles. Huh? We're looking at an entrepreneurship venture as we understand that there are basically four different stages, right? We say development stage, followed by startup stage, then survival stage and rapid growth stage, right? There are four stages uh, in any entrepreneurial ventures that uh, we launch, okay? But again, depending on uh, which kind of industry you are in, these life cycle stages may differ, may differ, okay? There could be certain uh, uh, entrepreneurship ventures whereby you don't have uh, survival stage at all, you know? You just uh, develop, you start up and immediately go to the rapid growth stage. So that's what um, is known as hit and run kind of entrepreneurial initiatives that you have. We come out with an idea, we hit the market, we, we earn as much as we can, and then we just leave the market, hit and run. You know, that kind of entrepreneurial initiatives are also there. So normally for a development in startup ages, uh, as we say that uh, we'll use seed financing and startup financing, right? So, so to, to compare or measure performances, we'll use cash burn rates, okay? Cash burn and liquidity ratios. When it comes to survival stage, uh, that is uh, what we need the first round of financing, right? Uh, this way we'll be using like uh, conversion period of cash burn, we'll be using liquidity and conversion ratios as well as leverage and uh, profitability ratios. Because here is a question of whether your venture is going to sustain or not, whether your venture would be able to continue business or not, okay? So that's where we use number of ratios as well as cash burn as a measure to analyze and evaluate the performance of an organization, okay? And here definitely uh, the user would be the entrepreneur himself, the angels, huh? business angels and venture capitalists as well as the commercial banks, okay? And then when we move to rapid growth stage, so you have already crossed two years, say for example, and you started growing rapidly, okay? So in that case, uh, we'll be looking at leverage or debt ratio, profitability, as well as efficiency ratios, okay? Who can use this data? The entrepreneur, business angels, venture capitalists, commercial banks, and so on. Why the business angels and venture capitalists? Because they are the one, either business angels, venture capitalists, or the commercial banks who have financed your business, your venture. So they'll be interested to look at that, okay? So you as an entrepreneur, you are evaluating your own venture as well as people who have landed you, the suppliers, the lenders, the creditors, they all will be benefited from these evaluations or measurement techniques that we have, okay? 
So when you have financial research, basically it shows a relationship, right, between two variables. Because when you calculate ratios later on, you will see we use different perspective data from different levels uh, and different activities of organizations. So different factors have been compared in a ratio analysis. And then when you do train analysis, basically it tells you, say, for example, you're comparing over time this year to next year. So this is train analysis. We have three years data, say 2019, 2020, Then you can do the train analysis, seeing whether the organization is moving upward or downward, it's just sustaining the operation, okay? We may even do cross-section analysis. That's where we are going to compare against another firm, as I mentioned earlier. Once we have the data and we evaluate it using ratios, all that, then we'll compare with similar kind of firm and see where do we stand, okay? That's cross-sectional analysis. And the fourth one would be industry comparable analysis. That's where you are going to compare your organization performance with the industry, okay? The industrial data is available most of the time. Huh? Most of the time it's available. So once you calculate all those ratios and then industry ratios are available for you or the data is available, you calculate and then you compare against the industry, okay? So these are the four common measures to evaluate performance, operating or financial performance of an organization, okay? If no one has question, I would like to proceed, okay? If anyone has question, please stop me at any time, huh? please. Just stop me because uh, I am on the, the slideshow, so I cannot see any one of you anymore, okay? So basically, you have to just switch on your microphone and you have to ask me questions if you have. If you have any queries, if you want to add on anything, please stop me and uh, ask me the questions, okay? Now, uh, this is the kind of data you will get from income statement, right? You start with uh, net sales, right? Or turnover, sometimes we call it turnover, sometimes we call it sales. Minus cost of goods sold, you get cost profit. Minus all expenses, you get profit before income and taxes. Minus, I know, the, uh, the interest, then it becomes profit before taxes. And then after taxes, you get the net income. This is common one that you have learned in your accounting class, okay? So you have two years data here. So we're going to use this two years data to compare the performance of the company, right? And this is another one uh, whereby we are showing you we have here three years data. Huh? If you have three years data, then train analysis can be easily done. Train analysis is done, uh, can be done. Uh, uh, industry comparative analysis can be done. Okay, and uh, even cross-sectional analysis can be done. So once you have three years data, more analysis can be employed, okay? So, so this is your balance sheet where you have total assets and we divide into current assets and uh, fixed assets, then you have liabilities and the owner's equity, right? So all data is available for you. So from this, we'll extract this data and then we put it in the formula provided, okay? And we calculate the ratio, okay? So the calculation of ratios are not really that serious, that rigorous, as long as you understand the formula and you extract the data and you plot it in the formula, you calculate. What is important? Most of the students, they know how to calculate. But the problem is majority students will fail to explain the findings of your calculations, okay? So that one I'm going to focus more so that you understand exactly how can we evaluate the conformity performances, okay? So it's, it's not only the calculation, rather the calculation can be done by uh, Excel. If you export this data into Excel, and then you put the formula there, Excel will do the calculation. And there are many softwares available now. Softwares will basically do the, uh, the calculation. It's not a difficult job now. What is important is, the software will not tell you how to interpret the findings that you have. So as a human being, we have to understand it, how to interpret, okay? So that one, I will put more focus so that you understand how can you actually use it, okay? So this is another one, the cash flow statement or statement of cash flow. Basically, you have three parts here, cash flow from operating activities, cash flow from investing activities and cash flow from financing activities, okay? So we have three different kind of uh, cash, you know, the cash that comes in or cash outflow, inflow and outflow being used and then we just sum it up, right? So we will have total cash flow 
either inflow or outflow from an organization, uh, from, from uh, the, the operating activities. Then we'll be looking at financing activities. Again, we we'll look at inflow or outflow, right? If it's minus, is outflow is plus than inflow. And we we'll look at also the, the, the cash flow from financing activities. Again, we'll be looking at inflow and outflow, right? So this data also will be used in calculation of ratios. Now, this is what is uh, the most important aspect when we evaluate operating and financial performance of an entrepreneurship ventures, cash burn, uh, which is completely a new topic for you, which is not being taught in the accounting or finance subjects before, okay? So this would be a new uh, 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 way of uh, measuring or evaluating performance of an entrepreneurial ventures, okay? What is cash burn? Cash burn is basically cash that venture expense in operating and financial expenses, okay? So, so you are going to total out the amount or the cash. Huh? We are looking at cash. Huh? We're looking at, we are not looking at buying on credit. We are looking at cash itself. How much cash being spent on operating and financial expenses as well as how much cash been tied up with your fixed assets. So that's all together we call it as cash burn. And cash burn is usually typically calculated per month, not a year basis, okay? Every month we'll calculate the cash burn. At the end, we will calculate the yearly, the total cash burn in a year, okay? So later, when I'm going to show you the calculation, you will see what the items will be included in the calculation of cash burns. So this is an example here. The earlier, the profit and loss account, cash flow statement as well as balance sheet that I've given you, the MPC company, right? So this is the cash burn formula that you have to remember, okay? So you can see here inventory related uh, expenses, admin expenses plus marketing expenses, plus R&D expenses, plus interest rate or interest expenses, changes in prepaid expenses minus changes in accrued liabilities plus changes in payable plus capital investment plus changes, huh? so it's a long formula. So we extract the data. Uh, if you look at the earlier, these are the data given to you, right? MPC, MPC income statement, balance sheet and cash flow statement. So the, that's where I'm getting all the data and I calculate the cash burn. If you look at here, the total cash burn in 2017 was 606,000, uh, 606,000. So the four to 5,000, how do you calculate? Basically, we are looking at here, the cost of goods sold plus changes in inventory. That makes it 425 at the beginning, the amount I put, okay? So that's how we calculate the cash burn. So you're looking at exactly so this one is yearly, right? This one I'm doing it yearly because we have the balance sheet, profit and loss account and cash flow statement that is at the end of the year, yearly data are given. So this is the total cash burn in 2016 for MPC, okay? 606,000, okay? Now, um, we have to now look at cash bill, uh, cash bill. So cash bill is basically the formula is net sales minus changes in receivables, which is very simple, okay? So the cash bill is basically the net sales minus the changes in receivables, so you calculate that, okay? So if you are calculating a cash bill rate, then it will be based on a fixed period of time, and again, typically for a month, meaning then the entrepreneur has an opportunity to evaluate the performance every year by using cash bill and cash burns, okay? Cash bill is basically how much cash you are getting in, right? Cash in, cash in flow. That's why you call it cash bill, all cash in flow. And cash burn is basically the amount you are paying more, right? The, the money going out, the cash outflow. The cash outflow basically cash burn, not necessarily outflow, the cash that is tied up in a business and cash that is spent for the business. Because in the cash burn formula, you do have also the money being tied up with your fixed assets, okay? So cash burn includes the money that going out as also, also the money being tied up with inventory, 
with acids and all that, okay? So the net cash burn is basically the cash burn that we one we calculated earlier minus cash bill. So that is what we get, how we get the next net cash burn. So if you look at here, we have 61,000 cash burn, right? So if cash burn is positive, meaning uh, that uh, you, uh, you, you are running into liquidity crisis a bit, right? You are having short of cash. If cash burn is negative, then if you have more cash in hand, right? Your cash bill is more than the cash burn. Cash bill is cash flow, right? And cash burn is can outflow and cash being tied up. So if you have more cash bill, that is very good for organization, okay? So now when you are comparing, then we may uh, compare uh, the cash burn between one company to another company, or we may compare from one year to another year. Typically, cash burn would be always positive because we are looking at cash being tied up and cash being spent in compared to cash inflow, you see? Because the building that you have built, the premise that you have built, the machineries that you bought, the vehicles that you bought, the many fixes are there and your cash are tied up. So compared to the money being earned by selling, definitely would be lower, right? So cash burn, net cash burn is expected to be positive always. But again, we see which one is having less, uh, the, the lower, the better. So the two way of comparison could be there. One is when you have two years data, you can compare two years and see whether the cash burn is more or less. And the other one, you are comparing with a similar company in the industry and seeing whether your cash burn is more than the, the similar kind of company that you have in the industry. Or even on the third, you can compare your company net cash burn with the industry overall cash burn. You see whether, you know, uh, look at the trend, right? Uh, industry competitive analysis, looking at whether you are doing better than the industry. Uh, in average, right? Or uh, you are doing uh, slightly lower than uh, the industry, okay? So this is one of the very important aspects in entrepreneurial finance course. So this one, you must be very clear, okay? And I'm going to give you an exercise which will help you uh, to practically learn how do we calculate and interpret, okay? Now, the rest, uh, next would be the ratios. I'm very sure you have learned it before in financial accounting class. The first group of ratios, we call it the liquidity ratios. Liquidity ratios basically tells you how much liquid cash you have in hand to run daily expenses, okay? So you start with current ratio. Current ratio is basically current asset, total current asset, if it's one year, divided by the total current liability. If it's two years, then we take average current asset between two years, right? Divided by average current liabilities. So the current ratio, current ratio, uh, we expect it to be uh, about two. If it is two, then we'd say the company is doing very well. Okay, why? Because current asset includes what? Current asset includes cash, account receivable, inventory, fee paid expenses, okay? So current asset is not necessarily all cash because you have account receivable here. You have sold on credit and you are waiting for the money to be received. And current asset also include inventory. So we have bought raw materials and keep it in the warehouse. Then it goes through the working process, then become finished goods. Then you package it, then you sell it. And then only you it become account receivable, then become cash. So it is longer time. That's why for liquidity ratio, if it's current ratio, we expect it to be two. <coughs> if it's two times, then we say the organization is safe, is doing well. The lowest possibly could be one. Uh, if it is one, we still would say, okay, uh, you may have liquidity problem. Uh, you may have liquidity problem in near future. You've got to be cautious, you've got to be careful, okay? If it's below one, it's dangerous, meaning the company is about to be bankrupt. You don't have enough cash to meet daily expenses in running the operating uh, operations of your organizations. Okay, so that is liquidity ratio. So the benchmark is two. Benchmark is two. Huh? One point five is still good. If two is a danger mark already. Below two is already red mark. 
the company is facing serious liquidity problem. Okay, that one you got to understand. So this is uh, how it is calculated, right? Uh, we use the average. So here we are looking at quick ratio. The quick ratio here, we uh, basically uh, drop the inventories because inventories take longer to convert into cash. Remember inventories, you buy raw materials, then you tie up your money, then you keep it in the warehouse. Then your raw materials come to the working process. Then you have the finished goods. Then you have the packaging. It goes to the warehouse again. Then you sell, it becomes income receivable. Then only after that you receive the money. So it takes longer time to receive. And that's why we have another measure in liquidity ratio, we call it quick ratio. How quick, right? How quick, you're looking at how quickly you can convert your items into cash, okay? So we take out or drop the inventories from the formula. So your current ratio, the formula was current asset, you have the current liabilities. But quick ratio formula is current asset minus inventories divided by current ratio, current current liabilities, okay? So what is the benchmark here? Quick ratio, if it is one, it's still good. It's still good, huh? Quick ratio, it shows your calculation one times. We would still conclude the company is having enough cash to meet daily expenses. If below one, then we would say the company may have liquidity issues or problem in near future. Like this case, the calculation is 0.62. So we can safely conclude that this company is going to run into serious liquidity problem. It's far below than one, okay? And even if you look at the current ratio earlier, we can calculate it is 1.37, right? So we said it's near, it is just above three and below even 1.5. So the company is already in a position like having liquidity issues, okay? Having problem of meeting daily expenses while running the operations, okay? And this is a net working uh, capital. This working capital basically what? A current asset minus current liabilities. That's what we call working capital, okay? So since we have two years data, we are taking the average, okay? We are taking the average. So here we are calculating the networking capital to total asset ratio. So we are looking at, when you say networking capital, current asset minus current liabilities tells you exactly how much money you have in hand or how much items that can be easily convert. You know? Current assets are basically the items, either cash or items that can be easily converted into cash. Okay, so that's current assets. And current liabilities, you know, the items that the company is responsible, liable to pay within three months or six, six months, a shorter time, you know? That's why we call it current liabilities. So you are looking at working capital, the cash or cash equivalent that we have in hand divided by the total assets, okay? So what is the benchmark for the percentage here? So here actually, in, in a practical sense, that there's no benchmark for it. Rather, we look at company to compare, company, right? Uh, if your percentage is higher, the better, right? You have more working capital compared to the asset. So here is 15% is still good. But again, it depends on when you do the comparison across the industry, yeah. you do a cross-section and analysis, or you compare okay. with the industry. I'm sorry, somebody is saying something, is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, please. Can I know why you need to divide two? Like, for example, 200,000 plus 180,000, then divide by two. That two stands for what, sir? Can I know? Yes. All right. Basically, if you are comparing one year to another year, then you, you don't have to divide it by two. Okay. But here, what we did is we, we did a, a summative calculation for two years. The reason is, as we understand that 30% of entrepreneurial ventures usually get goes down within two years, remember? So we are using the two years data together and then we are comparing the performance. Are you getting me? Oh, okay. So, during, uh, so uh, basically if two is uh, two years or more, is it? Yes, Mura FIFA. Basically, we can do both. We can do yearly calculation, no problem. If you do yearly calculation, then you have to do 
twice, right? And then you compare 2019 with 2020. But here, what are we doing is, this one basically, we are doing a comparative analysis in the industry. So I am calculating two years average, and then I'm also getting two years average of another company, then I'm comparing with that. So it depending on the kind of questions that you have, or depending on the purpose you have. If you would like to calculate yearly, then you don't have to divide by two. If you are calculating for two years average, then you have to divide it by two. Is that okay, Nora Fifa? Uh, okay, sir, but if they want three year something, so need then you have to divide year. by three. Yes. Ah, yes. okay, okay, okay. Thank you, sir. Understood, huh? Okay. So it depends on what kind of analysis are you doing. Uh, remember earlier I showed four kind of performance measures, right? Uh, one is train analysis, one is uh, cross sectional analysis, one is industry competitive analysis. Remember, so depending on which one are you doing, okay? <laughs> so if you are doing an analysis for an entrepreneurship ventures alone, then you do yearly, okay? And then you compare between the, the, the years. So if you are comparing the train, then also it will be yearly. But if you are doing a competitive analysis in the industry, then you might be just using two or three years data and you calculate just one and compare with the industry average. So you don't have to do three years calculations. Okay. So I proceed, huh? All right, now. So this is uh, uh, the cash burn and liquidity ratios that we have calculated. And you can see that uh, the yearly uh, change is being made is uh, given here. So that this is the trend analysis you do. If you put this in a uh, graph or plot, then you can easily see the trend in it, okay? Uh, this is one, comp one year, one company, you're comparing year by year, okay? So this could be that, okay? All right, so the next, the first one we learned about cash burn, right? Cash burn and cash bill, and then followed by we learned the liquidity ratios. And then now we are moving into leverage ratios or debt ratios, okay? Debt, debt ratios. So now we are looking at how much obligations the company has in terms of short term or long term. As we know, uh, most of the businesses will be forced to borrow, right? When you run, you start running the business, you'll be borrowing funds from different sources, right? So now we'd like to see how much obligation the company has, then we compare with others also. And here we uh, did the first one is known as total debt to total asset ratio. So whether your debt is uh, more than the total assets, okay? And here you can see it's 61%, which is too bad, right? Your debt is too high compared to the assets you have. So now even if you are bankrupt, and you sell off all your assets, you will not be able to pay off the debt you have. You know? So this one should be as low as possible, as low as possible. If you have tied up too much money in your uh, debt, right? You are borrowing too much to run the organization, meaning anybody see this ratio can understand that you may not be, you are not really performing well, rather you are too much dependent on uh, the creditors and you fail to pay back the money. <clears throat> So your debt remain a lot, 61% too high for MPC, the company data that you have, okay? So we here also the benchmark, uh, there's no benchmark for this ratio, the lower the better. So we compare between the industry or between the years, okay? Or between the company, right? Or, or the year to year. So here we're looking at the lower, the better, okay? Uh, this one is, uh, I don't think I'm going to explain this, it's not that important. Uh, this is another one, you look at current issue, current uh, liabilities to the total debt ratio. So here I'm looking at whether current liabilities are more uh, in compared to the total debt, okay? And you can see here, it's 64.8%, almost 65%, it's very high. When the current liabilities are more than your total debt, current liabilities are what? Basically, you are buying on credit okay, or short-term bank loans, okay? So those are the current liabilities. So here it looks like you've got too much of short-term obligations. Meaning you need a lot of money to pay off the short-term loans that you have. Within three months or six months, you have to pay so much of money, 
Okay, so your long term debt is much, much lower. By right, if you are running very well, performing very well, your total debt, long term debt should be more, you know, compared to the short term debt. Because short term debt, your obligation is, is too high, okay, because you have to pay back within three months to six months' time or maximum one year time. So you are under pressure of making the payment, you know, and that will force you later while you plan for strategies for an organization, your focus should be too much on long-term because you have too much short-term debt. So most of your strategies should be short-term oriented rather than looking at long-term oriented business. Huh? As we understand that a business is started as small, but decisions are made will have impact for long-term. And in accounting, we have a principle, we call it ongoing principle, right? So we assume business will continue forever. Once a business is started, we would like to continue for some time. So long-term obligation, more the better, because it can be paid after three years, five years, and so on. So this, this case is too bad, right? Short-term obligation is too high. Uh, this is your interest covered uh, ratio. You are looking at income before interest, taxes, uh, your depreciation and amortization. Huh? Usually we look at earning before interest and taxes, but here we also use the depreciation and amortization together, divided by interest expense that you have. Okay, Here would be also the, the lower would be the beta, okay? So yeah, you can see how we compare. So this is basically, you're just comparing year to year. And you, you can see the debt ratio basically increasing all the case, right? So the company definitely not doing well. The debt obligations are increasing day to day, year to year, okay? So which is not very good. And then followed by, we look at, uh, Profitability ratio and efficiency ratios, okay? Profitability ratio basically tells you how much profit you are making from a business, right? Uh, as we understand from the first session, we said that when you have an idea and you want to make it commercial, then uh, the reason we have to make it commercial because we want to make some money, right? Money should bring more money. So whether an idea is commercial or not, uh, is, 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 is much uh, dependent on whether the venture would be able to bring profits to the organizations, okay? So profitability ratio. And efficiency ratio, basically, we look at how efficiently you are using your assets uh, in producing uh, the products, okay? So we'll compare the total sales uh, against the total assets that you have. The money that you have tied up with the total assets against the sales that a company is making. So we'll compare that, okay? So that's the efficiency ratio. Efficiency ratio goes on uh, daily operations whereby it involves the cost minimization in activities. The lower the cost in production, uh, then higher uh, the efficiency, right? So that's what you're going to look at. And profitability would be the more the profit, then more cash inflow would be, right? So the more you sell, the more profit is there. When more profits are there, more cash inflow would be there. So you look at profitability ratios, okay? So this is a gross profit margin ratio. Okay, so net sales minus cost of goods sold, they are the net sales, that's a formula. And uh, here definitely we look at uh, the higher the beta, right? Higher the beta, gross profit margin. So this is, for this company, MPC is 34%. So now we are comparing, we'll compare with another company. If it is like 20%, then you are doing better. If similar company in the industry, uh, earn like about 40% then you are doing worse than your competitor, right? So the higher, the better, okay? So that you have to remember. Operating profit margin, uh, earning before interest and taxes, they are by sales, also the higher, the better. Net profit margin, the higher, the better, very simple formula, okay? So your uh, tax yield, uh, which uh, is not that important, uh, this, this one can be, uh, uh, that's, that's foregone, okay? Uh, sales to total asset ratio, that one already I said it, right? Uh, you sell 
uh, tells you basically how much money is going to come in in compared to the money tied up with the total assets. This case is very good, right? 1.4 times. So this one, we expect it to be more than one. We expect to be more than one. If less than one, definitely the company is not doing well, okay? It has to be more than one. And then again, when you compare year between year, the higher the better. And when you compare with your company against industry or your company against a competitor, the higher, the better, okay? And this is the return on assets, uh, one of the most important elements in profitability uh, measurement. Uh, the profit, the, the, the formula is net profit divided by average total assets. Actually, it's net profit divided by total asset if you are doing yearly, okay? But here we are using two years, so use average, okay? And uh, here you can see it's 4.8 percent, right? So which is, is, is considered to be very low, right? Uh, the higher, the better. So again, we are comparing between year to year. We look at higher, the better. If this year to next year, next year should be higher. And if you're comparing with your competitors, then yours should be higher than your competitor, okay? And then uh, followed by the ROA model, right? Uh, Net profit by sales multiplied net sales uh, divided by average total assets. Okay, this is again 4.8 uh, percent. Right, this is another way of doing it. The return on equity. Uh, this is another important elements of how we evaluate or measure the profitability of an uh, of a venture. The formula is very simple: net income divided by uh, owner's equity. Right. So the higher the beta again, the higher the beta. Okay. So here is twelve percent, meaning uh, people who have invested the money, uh, they will get about twelve point five percent return. Okay, twelve point five percent return. So now again, you will compare with your company against another competitors in the similar industry, or your company uh, return on equity against the average industry return on equity. Okay. And if you're comparing between the years of your company, the higher, the better, all right? So all the profitability and efficiency ratios, basically the higher, the better, uh, the higher, the better. That one we have to remember, okay? So this is how uh, the ROA model works, okay? That you will get the similar calculation. Either you use this or use this, you get the similar results at the end, okay? Now, this is how you look at uh, the company data that we have, the MPC company that we took an example. And you can see that uh, most of uh, the elements uh, shows that performance is declining. Performance is declining. Huh? But something very important for you to look at here, uh, you can see the sales to total asset is higher, meaning that the company's sales has increased but yet your profitability ratio is low. Profitability ratio is the profits are lower compared to the sales. Meaning that even though the company was very successful in increasing the sales, however, it failed to minimize the cost of operations. Okay, so that's the important point that you got to pick up here. So if you look at profitability or efficiency ratios, comparing 2018 to 2019, most of the ratios lower right uh, compared to the earlier year except the sales ratio has been increased so you have to take note here huh? so if you are the owner of this business or if you're a lender or if you're a supplier then you have to understand that this company in terms of sales doing very well okay but they fail to contain the cost the expenses are more okay the expenses is uh, the trend of expenses going to be increasing in compared to the sales also, right? Sales increasing as well as cost also increasing, expenses also increasing, which is not good, right? So the efficiency is not good. So at the end, looking at these ratios that we have on the screen now, we can safely conclude that this company in terms of sales, they're doing very well, but in terms of containing costs, somehow they have problems. So they have to focus on how can they minimize the costs and expenses during the operations, okay? So this is how it is. So now you are looking at uh, comparing, comparing with the industry, right? So say for example, your small venture is in the mobile uh, sector, uh, mobile industry sector, then you have your own company uh, ratios and then you have industry average. 
And if you look at here, uh, the comparison with the industry, the MPC, the specific company data that you have taken, for example, here, uh, most of the cases, it is lower. Only one item slightly higher is debt to total asset, right? Debt to total, which is not good, right? Higher the debt is worse, right? So meaning that the MPC company is not doing well at all because industry average, most of the competitors are doing much better than MPC. That's how we calculate, okay? Any question? No question, huh? so I continue. All right, okay, I think that that was the last slide, yeah. So what we look at today, basically, uh, first of all, we look at uh, different kind of measures that can be used uh, uh, to evaluate and measure performance of entrepreneurial ventures, right? Uh, there are basically uh, four kind of it, right? Uh, we can use uh, uh, financial ratio analysis. Uh, so you are looking at uh, different uh, elements of balance sheet, profit and loss account, and uh, cash flow statement, which can be put in the ratio formulas and it can be compared. You can do uh, a trend analysis looking at performance over time. We can compare in terms of sectional analysis, right? So you are comparing your company performance with another firm. And then also we can compare the performance of your company against the industry, right? So that's what we have learned, all right? And uh, the most important thing that we learned today besides this, uh, the new concept of cash burn, right? Cash burn and cash bill. So, this is a new concept that you have learned. So there should be more cash bill. Cash bill is basically cash comes in. And cash burn is all the expenses plus the money tied up in buying the total assets, okay? So this is something, a new concept that you have learned today. Uh, I'm sure that you have learned uh, the ratio calculations before even many of you would be able to explain the ratio calculations that we have, okay? So with that, uh, I will stop sharing and open the session for uh, question answers, okay? Uh, it's, it's quite a heavy rain here, so I think I, it will be a bit noisy. You may not hear me properly, but now I'm open for uh, question answers. If any one of you have any questions, please raise it now. Uh, sir? Yes. Will we do this calculation in our assignment or not? Yes, Danish. Uh, do in our assignment, do we need to do this calculation or not? Yes, 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 yes. Uh, basically, I'm going to give you a company's uh, balance sheet, profit and loss account, and cash flow statement. You know, possibly, I may ask you to get data from one of the listed company from Kuala Lumpur Stock Exchange, right? We have that, eh? Bursa Malaysia. From Bursa Malaysia, you have to find a company and uh, you just get two years annual report. Then all one year annual report will have two years data there. And I want you to use these ratios. You have to calculate and you have to make a conclusion in terms of the four elements that we have. Eh? We look at or five elements. You look at cash burn or cash bill. You look at liquidity ratios. You look at profitability ratios. You look at efficiency ratios, right? So all those uh, ratios that we use and cash burn, cash bill, you have to calculate that and make a conclusion uh, where the company stands now, whether they are doing very well or they are not really doing very well. Okay. That understood, Danish? Uh, yes, sir. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Any other question? No one? Uh, sir, for the... Sorry, sir. No problem, please. Uh, for the company, sir, do you will give us this company or we will choose it ourselves? I would prefer you, 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 you get uh, choose your own company. Uh, download from uh, Bursa Malaysia. 
Okay, because those data are available, right? Uh, if you are looking at entrepreneurial ventures, the data may not be available. We, we cannot find it, but it's all right. We get the data from an established company, and then we do the ratio calculation, and then we do the trend analysis and all that. Okay. I will give you clear cut in, uh, instructions uh, in the e learning portal. Uh, but for this week one, huh? um, I'll give, give you that. So the first assignment should be submitted uh, in week six, and then the second assignment should be submitted in week seven, okay? Okay, sir, thank you. Uh, sir? Yes, please. Uh, you will share this uh, lecture note in e-learning, right? Sorry, Najatul, I couldn't hear. Sorry, because there's a heavy rain here. You got to be a bit louder. Uh, so we share this uh, lecture note in e-learning, right? Yes, yes. Actually, I have already shared the slide in the WhatsApp group. And then tomorrow, I will also upload in the e-learning portal also. All slides should be uploaded there. All right. Thank you, sir. Welcome. And the video is already uploaded in my YouTube channel. I have shared it in your uh, YouTube, uh, in your WhatsApp group. The first two session video already up there. The third session and today fourth session, this video would be up by Sunday, this Sunday. Okay, so all four videos will be available in my YouTube channel. So while you do this assignment, uh, uh, the first one even, uh, you can listen to the videos there. Uh, if you need more clarifications, right? beside the slides shared with you. Mm -hmm.